correct. Four times the charm. Four times. Four times. We finally can get in here, Blake. I, I still got one more bowl of ramen to cook here. Okay, so he's working on the spicy noodle challenge. So that's for later. So we're just going to have it a little bit cool. We're cheating just a little bit. Um, and I was in the middle of creating a toner, a facial and hair tonal, toner. If this is one you can spray on your hair. This is one you can spray on your face. And it's amazing. And I, have, I was just getting ready to put the um, preservative in here and everything, the audio just shut off. So hopefully you're still here and you've found us again. And, and who's here? Let's see if there's anybody here. <laughs> and we don't lose our audio. Please let us know if we lose our audio because I'll be talking like crazy and there'll be no noise and you get really bored. So Blake is from, uh, Aberration, chromatic aberration. Cr chromatic aberration records. This is his new company and it's doing really, really well online and we're super, super proud of him. So we want to promote his company. Um, and so I'm just going to finish this. Well, uh, just know, uh, let me just recap because, you know, you probably won't want to watch the other two and I'm going to pull them down. Um, so we're going to start as if we, this was the first run, okay, guys? So I've got on my scale here, so I'm gonna, just going to bring it down a little bit. And I've measured out 90 grams um, of um, lemongrass hydrosol that was freshly made right here. And then I've added to that uh, my apple cider vinegar, um, 20 grams. And now I'm going to add my Germa Ben. We'll just turn this on and add the proper amount of that. Now we're just making a tiny little bit, so we're not going to need much of it at all, really. So just the smallest quantity. Oops. And I'm going to go ahead and let it have the rest of that. And that's going to keep this facial toner from growing any little microbials. Because the microbials that grow in this, well, any bad microbials. We already added microbials because, you know, we got apple cider vinegar. So I am going to do a demo right now. So this is a DIY. Use um, either homegrown or raw vinegar. So you're going to want something that's living because that's going to be better for your skin. Um, and let's just show you what it's like. It's either going to be a good thing or it's going to be a really, really bad thing. So testing, um, one, two, three. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try. No, I don't. You don't put it straight on your face. I just about made a serious mistake right there. You're going to do a test on your arm. All right. So just let it go. And if you don't have a reaction, then you can use it on more parts of your body. I'm going to do put a little bit on my hair and a little bit on my face. Mm, I like the smell. It's actually not too bad. I've always been a little worried about using too much apple cider vinegar, but this was just perfect. Yeah, I could use this every day. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> For those of you who are wondering why I'm doing more of the skincare line uh, for Mother's Day, I've been doing an awful lot of research for the last six months. And for May, we're going to be releasing a different skincare item. So this is kind of a... Um, quick little DIY to show you that you can make your own acid toner. And this is a really, really good one. Um, so what have we got over there, Blake? Oh, um, are we going to present this right now? Um, well, we're going to let it cool. All right. So did you put all of the spices on each one? Um, we got one volcano. Okay. One cheese. Okay. So this one's mine. There and we're going to let these, we're going to let these cool off. So we've got spicy noodle challenge noodles here it was the worst thing i've done the worst <laughs> thing i've done but we're gonna let those cool down a little bit <laughs> hi hannah i'm so glad you're back yay <laughs> blake is here he's made the spicy noodles we're gonna just set these aside though and let blake talk about his company yeah you don't want to get oh are you all set yeah i've done my little bit i did the toner and now you can do yours so you want to talk about your company a little bit blake all right, let me pull out my, my notes here, my note cards. <laughs> um.
guess I'll just start off with saying hi, I'm Blake. Um, in January, I made a company called Chromatic Aberration Records. We are a record label, kind of, or more of a cassette label. I'll tell you what, though. This started off as more of an idea, more of just like, hey, I want to contribute to this little culture of people who keep making cassettes, These, all these people. So here I am today with, you can't see that because there's glare on there, but um, we got, we're making cassette tapes. Um, we've been placing orders for these for the last few months. And I got to say, these are all hand done. I do these all myself. I ship out all the orders and basically all that's done is I place an order with duplication in Ottawa. They come here, I ship them all out. Um, Chromatic Apparition Records is one in many of these small cassette labels that produce tapes for solo artists on the internet, for big bands, big like set pieces, and we're just another part of that. Um, I've made a lot of friends um, recently with all of our, just starting out, all of our, or my, I guess I should say, my efforts in like wanting to reach out to these artists and wanting to produce stuff for them, which they might not otherwise be able to. And cassettes, although it may seem like, you know, a bit goofy, something I've always loved doing. It's something I collect myself, and they're cheap. Mm -hmm. And it's one way to get your stuff out on a physical medium. Well, like records have had a big, vinyl records have had a big comeback. I can't see oh, yeah. cassettes. Cassettes wouldn't do the same. I mean, I have all my, my old cassettes. I used to do Columbia Records orders and get like 15 cassettes. And then... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it has a different sound. Kind of like records have that kind of sound that you like. Well, oh, tapes yeah. have that same, you know, uniqueness. And a lot of people, so this is really exciting. So this is one of his record labels. Who is this? Oh, um, this one. Um, this one we announced back in, what would I say? Spicy noodles. Yeah, spicy <laughs> noodles. <laughs> um, this one we announced back in early March, I want to say. This is an artist I reached out to myself. Um, it's Clarence Kelly, who, how close can I get that to the camera? Yeah, I can work on that. You there can we go. Talk and I'll... Um, so Clarence Kelly, um, who is of, I blanked out, I blanked out. Um, I followed his Wooden Woman band for a little bit. He did a lot of analog stuff. Um, his original album from Wooden Woman, which was his self-titled, really spoke out to me because he said he recorded the entire thing using old analog church equipment. I thought that was really cool. And he did it all himself. And so like years later after he made that album, I contacted him like a month or two ago and immediately he was like, yeah, I'd like to make some tapes with you. I'm making my new album right now. Perfect. Let's make that. Let's do that. And so here I am. Um, this album is going to be released on April 18th, April 13th, one of those. And I got to say, it's one of my favorites of this year. Um, we're taking pre-orders for neon orange tapes right now uh, on our website, which I'm sure we'll link sometime. Now, Renee's asked you a question. She says, um, can we get a little demonstration of some of the music? Oh, is that something um, you're allowed to do? Maybe. I mean, like. And if, can you play a, a portion of one of the tapes? Yeah, totally. Like. Okay, we'll do that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, do you know where all your stuff is? Um, I could. I'll let you think about it. I can finish my demo if you want to go get that and do it right now. Or I'm trying to think. Do we just like play it on my phone or do we just like. We could do it on the phone. You can play it on the phone. Does we, that work for you, Renee? You want to hear it on the phone? I'm, I'm wondering, do you want to, do you want to hear like a live tape demonstration? Because I have my portable tape deck that I can we bring We could do here. that too. Tape technology. That might make it a little more. Exactly. Like. Okay. Sell it. All right. So he's going to, he's going to show you some of his work and um, I'm going to finish the toner demo because it looks like. I'm not going to have a reaction to this. So while I do the tono demo, he's going to get set up and um, show you what 
his uh, his his product is like. How does that sound? All right. Yeah, she's up for it. Okay. So here is the toner for those of you who missed the first live. I got three quarters of the way through formulating. So there in this bottle is a um, hundred grams of. Um, lemongrass hydrosol, which I made from scratch. Those of you who saw me do that, um, there's another batch of it right here. Um, so it's it's a floral water. And then I added uh, 20 grams of my fresh active, uh, apple cider vinegar to it. And then I added my favorite broad spectrum preservative because I want to use this every day. And this is going to be, oh, hey, Deborah, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Aroma Delight. Is that Holly or is it, is it Holly or Deborah? I, there's two companies that are so close. <laughs> and I love you both. Um, <laughs> and Deborah. Okay, hi, Deborah. I got it right the first time. So the other one is aromatic suds, isn't it? That's Holly. Okay, so I'm gonna try this demo, and I, I want, I wanted to make it for my hair, and I wanted it for all over my body after I take a bath. Now, for those of you who don't um, know much about the skin pH and the optimal skin pH of our body, it's around four to five. Um, four is better. Now the pH of water is seven. So even if you don't use soap you've um, increased the pH of your skin just by getting it wet. And the body has to work really, really hard to get that mantle back to its optimal level. And I did some research and designed a little all over body toner that you can make yourself um, that I just made. <laughs> and I'm gonna test it for you right now. It smells amazing. You would think apple cider vinegar would be a little bit, uh, but it's not. This one is mostly hydrosol. So you could use rose, I use lemongrass. And then of course, because you've got a water product, you're going to need to preserve it, please. Or store it in your fridge and use it within a week. Okay, so this activated, this, this is kind of like an, an acid toner. So it's not citric acid, it's acetic acid. Um, but it's going to, um, like if you use soap, you know, soap has a pH of at least 10 or as much as 10. Let's hope it's not any higher than 10. Um, and this, this will help to lower the mantle on your skin. So I just sprayed it on my arm, but you can also spray it in your hair. Um, oh, that feels really good. Oh, it smells really good. And all over your body. So I will be using this. Oh, oh, girls. Oh, I love it. Oh. <sighs> this is awesome. Oh, my goodness. This is something you could take to the market with you, Deborah, and test it on people. They could try it out before they buy it, and it's completely clean. You know, a lot of times we have to put sticks and things in our product to to demonstrate them well hey brenda welcome from florida welcome to victoria <laughs> we are live and i've just done a demo on an all over acid body toner uh <laughs> conditioner it's awesome using apple cider vinegar floral water and preservatives very very simple you could add a whole lot of other wonderful things like you know pen vitamin B5 and, and other things. But this is very simple, very delicious, and very wonderful. you got to try it, Deborah. You've got to try it. It's so easy. You probably have everything in your in your, um, in your your arsenal already. And if you start making um, hydrosols, this is a very inexpensive um, setup, um, then the sky's your limit. You can try all sorts of things that are good for the skin, maybe turmeric. I'm going to be making a cucumber hydrosol next. I don't know if I'll do it live or if I'll do it and release it later, but I will definitely be showing you how to make a cucumber hydrosol. I think the fruit hydrosols are something that you don't see very often. You see all the essential oils, right? But there are essential oils and vital components and phytonutrients in fruits and vegetables as well that you can make yourself if you have a um, distiller, which is really exciting. Yeah, I wish I could just <laughs> you can try it right now. Um, yes, I love this. Um, all right, so I think Blake is ready. So we're going to turn the time back over to Blake from Chromatic Aberration Records. You got it. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, where do I start? I guess 
Demo uh, of the of my tape deck here, which do we have a clip? Cool. Uh, it's all the way it? over there. Yeah. Cool story about this tape deck. I found this in a box on the side of the road, and it still works. I think you've got will it reach. <laughs> um, it's plug right here. Yeah, it'll reach. Nice. I need the plug. I'll plug it. Ooh. There are so many plugs on this table. I tell you that. <laughs> it's like it's not a fire hazard. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're only gonna oh. be on for an hour. So. Um, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's good. We're watching it. Um, no smoke. There are tapes everywhere. There is honeycomb everywhere. But um, ah, there's honeycomb later. Just wait, yeah. guys. You thought the toner was cool. There's more, more um, coming. You also decanted this. <laughs> so. I guess I'll just talk about our first release here, like a seven-piece band from Australia called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Um, this album is called Polygon Wanaland. Um, I'll probably have it playing very quietly in the back here while I talk about all this music stuff. Um, yeah. Let's hope it's not too loud. Let's hope you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting, guys. It's a new entrepreneur. I know him. Okay. Is he going to turn it really loud? Um, I'll turn it down a little. So, I know this tape deck isn't the best, but I'm going to explain... <laughs> I'm going to explain, basically, the process of getting these tapes duplicated. This is loud. <laughs> this is weird. Go ahead and turn yeah. it down. This um... We'll, we'll turn it up later so you can hear it. Yeah. Um, but basically... Turn it down one more. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. There's a company... Can you guys still hear it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. It's close. Like, yeah. That's... Yeah. talk about the process that he creates these. So basically, um, how we work as a label is I don't duplicate these tapes myself. I don't dub these tapes myself. What I do is I go through a company based in Ontario called duplication.ca. Um, now, compared to, say, back in the 80s, um, duplication of cassette tapes has become more of a niche thing. There's definitely a lot less demand for it, and there's very few, I guess, actual companies. There's a few people who dub tapes themselves, but in terms of actual companies, I'd say there's only like one or two major corporations per country around their region. Um, this one's based in Canada. There are two or three official companies I know from America, two or three in Europe, all that sort of stuff. But Compared to the 80s, we have had a lot of advancement in how tapes sound. Again, I know this isn't the best tape deck, but if you have an actual deck, if you have it hooked up to, say, your record player speakers, it sounds great if you get the right materials. And that's the same with the anything. Player, yeah. With soap, you need to get the right materials to make the right stuff. Yeah. Um, the best stuff. The like. best, <laughs> and you get the best. Stuff. I get the best. Stuff. Her soap's that really best good. Stuff. I use it all the time. It's fantastic. <laughs> Renee makes that really good soap. That one you guys like demolished through with the roses on top. Right. The blue, the blue oh, swirl. Oh, that was that was very good. Yeah. Thank you. Told you. That was awesome. <laughs> that was Renee. Thank you, Renee. Um, that was honestly the colors on that was fantastic. Honestly, yeah, it was gorgeous. Yeah, it was... And the scent was. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was brilliant. I always feel bad like going through these because I want to keep them, you know? <laughs> no, we want you to use them. Use That's the, the point, guys. <laughs> use the soap. We'll make more, right? There you go. That's right. Um, I was talking about... Oh, um, yeah. Compared to the 80s, um, we have a lot of advancements in how tapes are made. Um, we have entire setups duplicating these tapes in real time. Um, you have tape that is made of chrome metal and they could sound just as good as you know an mp3 you listen to on your phone if not better if you have it hooked up to your speakers um 
And why I go through duplication is just so, you know, I don't copyright. Really, copyright, yeah. But also, it's expensive to dub tapes on your own. I tried mm -hmm. going out and getting, you know, all the materials mm -hmm. to hook up to your tape deck. Cost like three hundred dollars over here. Terrible. Can't do that. <laughs> Remember I'd, those days, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on top, of, on top of the materials you need to get, on top of just all this wiring, not worth it. Yeah. Now, all the hand work you need to do. Now, Deborah wants to know if you have a YouTube channel yet. Um, not for chromatic aberration. Okay. Um. So, I know some other labels have dedicated YouTube channels. They upload their um, artists' albums onto, but we don't have that right now. Um, all the links go through the artist's personal pages where um, we just link bandcamp.com is what a lot of these solo artists use. Um, I won't go too much into bandcamp, but basically... It's a worldwide distributor of independent art you can upload your stuff to and just hook up your PayPal and you get paid for your art depending on who wants to buy it. Easy. Um, we go through that. And then if you want it on CD, I don't mean, <laughs> CD, it's, CD. It's been so long since I've said tape. If you want to tape, then you can order it through an independent distributor. Like, like is that what you are, an independent distributor? Definitely, yep. Yeah. That's how that's, you got it. That's exactly what So who is this guy? Okay, so... He's another one of the artists? This is another one of our artists. He's, um, actually, I really like Colin personally. I've talked to him a lot. He reached out to me personally to, um, put his album, Recessions, on the tape. He goes by the artist name, The Union Artist. And he does a lot of experimental stuff. He uses themes of, like... He records stuff from across the room to add this unique effect to it. A lot of these tracks are piano tracks covered by, you know, ex like old videos from the 50s, the 40s, these black and white videos that barely just had audio attached to them. And it makes it for this unique soundscape. Um, I really like Colin. He's a great guy. Um, and I'd recommend this tape. This tape, alongside... The Reverboy tape, which I know you can't really see, but they're here. <laughs> um, and a little bit. There we go. Yeah. You can see it. I'm used these... to the angle of my life. <laughs> yeah. You know what's up. Um, these two are coming tomorrow. I'll be shipping these out tomorrow. Um, both of them are really good. They both contacted me personally almost as soon as I started this label. And without them, I don't think we would really have a thing going on for us. So there will be a link in the description when this goes live, when this is finished, after the live is finished, for all of the information to order Blake's material that he has available and when the release dates are. So we'll do a very detailed one because he's just brand spanking you guys. Oh, yeah. So he's like platform um, entrepreneur here. And so that's another reason I wanted to take the time to show you this because I thought it was so unique and so new and so fun. <laughs> it's um, fun, yeah. Yeah, that... I, I just think that he deserves some some time and some advertising, and I it just he has so much um, um, energy when it comes to this. He just really wants to do this, so yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, uh, I will say that like you've helped me through a lot of like how this even works because <laughs> I don't know how to do ordering. It, without <laughs> you, I would have just been totally lost here. But um, yeah. All that info will be in the description. We'll probably link it sometime midstream. I don't know. Yeah. But um I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> midstream. <laughs> if I could, I'd go like, go here. You guys see it yet? It's, you see it yet? It's <laughs> on the bubble. It's, 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 it's right. <laughs> so that's really awesome. So yeah. did you want to play one more little sample? Um, um and we can yeah. just hold it up and then I would wanted to show you guys some more stuff with my honey. I uh I just um, cleaned out the hives today. And hi, Brenda. Hi. They were a beneficial bunch. I hope you're still here. Yay. Um, we're going to be doing a couple more things. Um, we're going to come back to Blake's company a couple of times and ask. So if you have any questions about his company, you know, just put it in the comments and we'll get back to it when we go back and forth. We're going to play another 
sample while I get set up. And I'm just going to show you um, the honey and you can listen to the music because we actually got some really cool honey, honey that you don't normally get. This is brood honey and um, I'm going to be putting it into comb boxes, um, which is going to be pretty cool. And these will also be available for sale um, on my website. So there'll be a very limited number. Um, what happened was the, the reason I have brood honey is because the um, yellow jackets killed my hive, <laughs> killed them all, and there was honey left behind. Normally, um, you don't get this honey because it's the honey that's fed to the queen bee and to her, um, her growing brood. So it's richer and um, more flavorful than, you know, a single nectar um, honey that you find in honey boxes, which is kind of unique. So what are we going to play next? Um, this one isn't a sample from our label, but I'll tell you this much. This was one of my favorites of 2018. I'll play this just as a sample of maybe other labels you may if you continue to look into this, take a look at this. This one is Matthew Lee Cothran, and his label is from Joy Void, and their label I've followed very closely. I buy a lot of stuff from them. Um, they've been a great inspiration. So I'll just plug it in. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over by the microphone. So hopefully you can feel, actually I'm gonna grab the honey. Yeah, let's move that over. You gotta so take a my Jenny. Oh my gosh. Let's take a sneak peek at that. Yeah. So is it playing? Um, I'm not sure. Or do you need to turn it up? There we go. Okay, so go ahead and turn it up nice and loud. Yeah. There we go. I do this. You put some of that honey aside for me? Oh, sure. I'll put some aside for you. I'll pick you a nice big piece. So I've got a piece here that looks like it'll go. Let's see. Just like that. Yeah. So it fits inside. So it's like a cookie cutter. So that's mostly just wax. Right there. So that's mostly just wax. So this is all honeycomb. Yeah, that looks tasty. I need that. <laughs> How does it go back in? Okay. okay. I've done this before. Really, I have. <laughs> Doesn't look like I have. Here, you can't really see what I'm doing. Sticky. It's very sticky. And there's the top. But you know, I think I'm going to put another layer in. It's just not going to be a full little half pound here. So, let's see. That one's just going to have to be that. I want it to still look like a honeycomb. Okay, so could you get me a plate, plate so I can oh. put these on a container? <sighs> this one's a fatter one, so that comb was a little thinner. So this is something we get maybe once every couple of years. Because a lot of times the yellow jackets will just empty out the entire hive, uh, call it, um, home. This one is really nice and dark. Let's see. Here's another one of my. <laughs> it's so sticky. <laughs> and I can't use gloves, guys. If I use gloves, it would be 10 times harder. The gloves would just come off. They would just come up. Well, I'm just going to no. check the other side. Oops. Don't want to drop on it. Make sure we've got honey all the way through. We do. It looks insane. 
It is. It's absolutely incredible. I'm going to have to actually put my little bit of muscle in here. Okay, wait. I want to know if you can hear, like, the sound, the of, the sound of this honey. Now keep in mind, this is the brood comb. So it's gonna be darker. That is some mad ASMR. <laughs> this is sticky. Oh, I just got sticky all over here. Oops. <laughs> Thing. No, I don't use it that much. So there are cocoons in a portion of this. So it's not all wax. It's gonna have really, really rich, um, Flavored honey. Really, really rich. So can get it back in. Yeah, that's where they laid their larva. Ooh. It's very different honey. It's not <laughs> honey you'll ever get anywhere. No. But it is amazing stuff. So there's a lot of, if I can get it lined up. There we go. Went in. Oh. Maybe. Oh. So there's a nice big one. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so I'll fill in the gaps with extra honey just to make that work. <laughs> and then of course I'll shrink wrap it so it can't seep out, seep out when you it ships. That kind of gives you an idea of how it's packed. Um, this is a dark comb. This is a light comb. Do you see the difference? You can decide which you would rather like to try or you can get one of each. Um, it's amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. To extract the honey, instead of having like the honeycomb, we'll cut off the top here. So this is wax right on top. And then I'll spin it. Uh, whatever I don't turn into comb honey, I will turn into bottled honey and it comes in little jars that like you can get a an eight ounce jar, like it's actually in mason jars, or one of those little honey jars that I have. The little honey samplers are five dollars, and then the the honey I'll have to look at um, for the, the the larger quantities. <laughs> I'm so sleepy. <laughs> Do you need okay. like a cloth or something? I'm gonna have to put you in charge and I'm gonna go get cleaned up. So that right. was just a quick demo. I will go ahead and do most of the messy work. Um, anything that doesn't get, okay, how do I extract the rest of the honey? Any of it that doesn't get made into these combs and I'll have a, probably about 10 of these, maybe 20. Um, I will smush up and put in pantyhose, <laughs> clean pantyhose and strain it. I just drain it. And I think I have a video here on my YouTube channel on how I do that. So I feel like a live or something. I'll put a link um, afterwards. I think I can put a tag in these. I might not be able to put tags or cards into the live stream, but I will definitely put a link in the bottom um, in the description box on you know how I extract the honey. It's it's pretty low um, tech because <laughs> I just have a couple of hives. I don't have a lot of hives. I mean, I had like seven of them last year, but um, yeah, we got like one hive that survived and then I had to go buy more bees anyway. So, um, I mean, it just happens. It's, it's hard to raise honeybees. And yeah. this is really interesting. This is not a bee. This is actual pollen. Like that's a oh. big pollen. So if you get the dark honey, you'll get like pollen, um, chunks in it, like, like the bees stuff that they would mix with the honey to feed the queen and to feed the larva. So you would get that to eat, which is pretty amazing. It tastes really interesting. Um, I'm hoping that um, we will get some queen cells and I can show you what royal jelly looks like this year. We're definitely gonna be going into the hive a number of times. And I'm also a member of the Capital Region Swarm Committee. So on Fridays, I man the lines and I will take you on a swarm call if we get one and I'm able to tape it. So that's gonna be exciting in the honey portion of, of the Gen Spice channel. So if you're looking forward to that, let me know. <laughs> Thumbs up guys. Um, so yeah, let me know in, in, in the comments below what you wanna see more of 
on this channel and I will do more of it because I do more than just soap. I make lots of soap and I make soap with every ingredient that we talk about practically. Um, <laughs> including, the song, yeah. including the honey. Although I do have one more demo before the, um, before we go into the spicy noodle challenge, I have been like so into probiotics. I mean, we're going to be, you're going to be learning how to make um, hibiscus kombucha. Um, I, I, I did a, um, a collaboration with Positively Probiotics. So I will be demoing a number of her cultures, her heritage cultures. So once you get these heirloom cultures, you can, Put it aside and make it later and just store it in your freezer because they are perpetual. You don't have to buy them every time you want to make a certain kind of yogurt. The skier, I made it last night and it's amazing, amazing, so creamy and so good. Um, along with the Positively Probiotics uh, culture line, like we've got skier and we've got some thermophilic and mesophilic yogurts. Um, creme fraiche, sour cream. Um, I'll probably be doing one or two of those a month. So look for those if you're interested in probiotics and adding them to your diet as a natural um, gut uh, health um, additive that's not purchased. I always see these people buying all of these powders and drinking them for probiotics. And I'm like, just have some yogurt if you can. Um, a lot of people who can't tolerate um, gluten breads, regular breads from the store can actually tolerate sourdough. So sourdough is something that I'm going to be doing today. That's the last demo of the day. And then we'll do the spicy noodle challenge. So while I get set up for that, um, Blake, do you want to talk about another one of your artists? Sure. Well, I'm yeah. going to go wash my hands. <laughs> I'll take over. Yeah. Um, I'll scoot in here. All right. It's Q and a time with Blake. Um, <laughs> so I'll plug this out. <laughs> Cool tape. By the way, these are like really cool. As a physical item, I'd say compared to records and CDs, not only is it the most durable, like I could throw this against a wall and it still work. Really nice, really nice. You can rattle it around and it's just, it's fun. It's fun to hold. Buy tapes, please. Buy my tapes. I'm begging you, please. <laughs> You're going to have to help me out. Buy, no. my, tape. buy, my, buy, buy my stuff, please. <laughs> I'm, so, right. so I've got I'm delaying the spicy noodle challenge because I don't, I can't do this. Me up. So here I have a half a cup of sourdough uh, starter. Now this sourdough starter, I actually enriched it yesterday with milk kefir grains. So I used um, milk kefir, not milk kefir grains, milk kefir. I used, I believe, I think it's the China variety, the Asian variety, because it's nice and big. Um, I have two different varieties of milk kefir, which I make all the time. Okay, Blake, what made you decide to go into this field? You've got a question. Oh, um... Um, long story short, I guess, um, ever since I was young, I followed a lot of independent music. Um, I thought it was, music is a unique soundscape. It's a unique storytelling device compared to, you know, written li literature and anything else. It's unique. It, do you want like the, the keys in your brain, man? That's what I could say. But honestly, it's just because, you know, I like music so much and I wanted to contribute to, you know, a smaller culture of artists just wanting to make music rather than these big trillion dollar bands and stuff, you know? Yeah. And Blake comes from a family of artists. His mother is a world renowned watercolor artist, oh, Leslie yeah. Redhead. Um, she's an incredible artist. Um, inspiration to all of us all of those who know her so check her out too she does have a youtube channel it's called leslie redhead yeah just leslie redhead leslie art. redhead art and she does every single day she uploads a portion of her painting and you get to see it come to life it's even better than bob <laughs> <laughs> is it bob oh who's the guy with the big hair bob bob ross bob, yeah, bob ross, yeah. <laughs> even better than bob 
<laughs> just fluffy rainbows. <laughs> Smiling, happy, happy, yeah, happy accident. We all have happy accidents. I did yeah. that in my soapy kitchen too. All That's right, why so, I run a business. So I started sourdough again, up, and I was kind of like, I want some sourdough bread. And I had put aside some of my starter from about mm, five years ago. And what you do is you just dry it. You just dry it at room temperature, and then you rehydrate it and um, and get it going again. So I got it going again, and I had all this starter. I have so much starter because once you start feeding it, you have to keep feeding it and you have to keep it alive. So I found the most amazing YouTuber blogger. I will put a link in the description to her recipes below. It's here. Here. It's this right box. here. Right here. Right here. There it is. See? Is she there? This is the farmhouse on Boone. And if you haven't tried any of her recipes and you love sourdough, you need to try her pancake recipe oh. first. Uh, because it uses up all of that starter that you've built up over the week. Because I can only eat like half a loaf of bread a week. I can't. And none of my kids like sourdough bread. And it's so much work to make a good loaf of sourdough. In fact, I have a YouTube series coming out. So I'll show you how I make my sourdough bread. But the pancakes, everybody loves them. I made, took six cups, six cups of sourdough starter and made so many pancakes today and they're light and they're fluffy and they're delicious. And I will save that recipe for another day, but know that you can find it on the farmhouse on Boone if you are a sourdough maven. Uh, and I have been taking a break for the longest time. So I'm just gonna show you, she has another recipe that's even more popular on her site called sourdough English muffins. So you have to proof it for 24 hours. So we're gonna do the first step in that here just because I thought it would be fun to get my head, hands all messy in front of you because not what I always do. <laughs> I always make a mess when I go live. <laughs> and even when I don't go live. <laughs> there you go. Yes, Royal Jelly, we will, um, I know you probably said in your other video, but when are you coming to visit? Oh, hi, Anna. Uh, we'll probably come to visit this summer. We're hoping to, to come down to Idaho this summer. So I know Auntie Rachel's planning on coming up in August, so we'll probably go down in July. Yeah. Probably, yeah. probably July. The kids are in school till June, so if we can swing it. I may just be coming by myself, but I'm definitely coming to see you, okay? want to see you, Hannah Banana. I love you. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, huh? I hope I didn't embarrass you. <laughs> get, get some of that, like, Jen Mack. Like, I love you, my fans. I love you. I love you, my niece. <laughs> this is niece. my niece I'm coming to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Deborah had a, a, a question. Jen, do you use the royal jelly for any of your products? Yes, I do use royal jelly in my products. No, I do not produce enough in my own hives to to make product with it but i have tasted it and it's kind of a scary thing so i'm going to show you where royal jelly comes from um, it's a little too hardcore for me to produce my own royal jelly um, because it comes from emerging queens and you have to kill that little larva and i don't like doing that but when i get too many of them and i don't have anyone to give them to I I do have to destroy them anyway so um, I can show you that royal jelly and maybe we can create something with it I don't know if I will get a lot of queen cells this year I'm hoping not because that means I'll have to deal with swarms and I may lose my bees yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there'll be a new queen in there hopefully <laughs> um so yeah that's where that process there are people who actually raise queens and I do have a queen raising um nuke but I haven't actually done that um that's more, more advanced beekeeper technique. And, you know, one of these days I might, I have actually considered it for my products, but like I said, it's a little too hardcore for me. Um, I love my bees <laughs> and it's, it's really hard for me to sacrifice them for, for that. But I'll, I have purchased Chinese um, imported Royal jelly in use, do use it in my products. So that's very hypocritical of me. I know. And on Sunday, that's a bad thing, but <laughs> I'm just not there yet. Um, I work so hard to keep like my bees alive that the thought of destroying a queen um, is just daunting to me, even though, you know, it might make me prettier. <laughs> pretty, pretty. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to put my hair 
I'm just going to put my hair up really quick because I don't want my hair in my bread. So I, but this is my, I know it's, it's, it's my germ. So I know I've just put my hands in my hair and then I'm going to, okay, I'll go wash my hands. Fine. Oh. <laughs> Actually, well, I've got a disinfectant right here. There you go. Please don't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me talk again. <laughs> All right. So we'll use that vinegar toner as a, as a disinfectant. All right. Works for me. So we're going to take the half a cup of the, don't want my, I'm going to sit down for this. So we're going to put it down. So this is my starter and it's active and it's been wanting to do this for like the last two hours. So it's very simple. You take two cups of flour and half a cup of starter. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> And could you get me some more water? Yes, I can. And a cup of water. <laughs> we'll just soak that up and pretend I didn't do that. See, with live, you can't pretend you didn't do that. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> hey, Hannah, welcome. Your brother. You'll have to come back, Hannah, and listen to your brother's spiel. It was very awesome. Close enough. So we're making a little bit of... Um, we're going to try another recipe from the farmhouse on Boone, and this is English muffins. Now, like any sourdough recipe besides the pancakes, um, could you go get me the coconut oil bucket that's in the sink there? I'm oh, just yeah. going to use some of that coconut oil to get the sticky off my hands. I know that she did that too. So if you want this recipe, I'm going to put a link in below to her blog, her blog. Get some of that coconut oil on my hands. Yeah. Um, put some there. But her pancake recipe was so good that my kids ate all of it. I had to triple the recipe. Um, and to, to make things even more exciting and more wonderful, um, I'm going to need a little more water. There wasn't quite a full cup there. And my sourdough was a little bit fed, a little bit healthy fed. Um, They actually toast up really, really good too the next day. So I wanted extra. Um, that's better. That's where we want to be. Perfect. There we go. So I'm just going to, she says, stir it up and leave it for 12 to 24 hours. That's All some right, more so ASMR. Yeah, this is some serious ASMR. This is, if I can quit talking during it, can you move that cup? Oh, yeah. We'll get closer to the camera. Can you hear that, guys? Okay. There. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> ASMR minute. And some more seconds. <laughs> so we're going to cover. <laughs> I'm going to go find a place and I should probably switch it to a different bowl and that's going to be hard to clean up. Um, so I will be right back and I actually am going to put you in charge again, Blake. That's so you can right. do another talk about some of your artists or talk about your company. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe talk about how people can order your products. Oh, yeah. So give them um, that information. So pull it up back up. We're back. It's me. Again, I'm back. All right. Um, so on the topic of, you know, our artists ordering our stuff, um, all of our tapes, $7 USD plus applicable shipping. That's not bad. That's really good. Um, how you can go about ordering this is we have a shop from website called Big Cartel. And if you type in chromatic aberration records dot big cartel dot com. You can take a look at our website. Um, we have boxes for each individual album. You can buy a tape from them. We may be even adding newer products for older albums in the future. That depends on where we are. But 
right now you can order our tapes. We have about four orders are live. Um, do we have any questions? No, we don't. I guess I'll just keep talking. So I guess on our artists and where you can follow us is you could either bookmark that website page if you like our stuff, or you could simply just follow us. We have a Twitter and an Instagram account at Chromatic Record. Um, oh, where can you buy a tape deck? I haven't seen one in a long time. So on that question, um, that's a weird one, actually, because <laughs> if there, again, there aren't a lot of companies that make tape decks anymore. So what you usually want to do is just go thrift shop hunting. That's what I did for mine. I bought my Panasonic tape deck for $20 and it sounds like a dream. Um, bought it from a, from a thrift store on the corner. Easy. You don't want to go for anything that's made in 2010, 2019, our current year. You want to go for 70s or 80s because they're cheap. They're usually in good condition other than you might need to replace a bolt or a belt. And they sound even better. Um, things made in this year, I've bought. Um, I've seen people buy stuff buy these newer tape decks from 2019 and they turn out, they sound terrible. They don't connect to anything and they're like upwards 500, a thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Don't want to spend that money. No. So I'm lucky. I bought, I wanted a record player in the eighties, nineties, early nineties. Nineties yeah. is okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted a record player in the nineties cause I didn't have one anymore. I was 70s baby so I had a record player growing up and I started collecting the vinyls again and I have like Doris Day and, and Nat King Cole and and the Disney ones are the oh, ones yeah. that like I was a Masketeer kind of girl <laughs> <laughs> and that Benicello was you know one of my um yeah I just thought she was <laughs> <laughs> so we got some of her stuff and i got this combination deck it's got a tape player um cds were just coming out then so it's got cd um and it's got um eight track and oh. it's got uh, a turntable so those are out there so look for those um I would caution to make sure your tape deck is very clean. Those of us that know a lot about tapes is they will eat your tape if it's not completely clean. Oh. And don't panic. If your tape gets eaten, just pull it out gently and slowly and wind it back up. Yeah. <laughs> right? The old right? number two pencil. <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> yeah, buy one of the old ones. That's where to go. That's oh, yeah. where to go. How long does shipping take? Um, oh, for our tapes? Okay, so it's a bit weird. Um, I ship nearly every day, like day of, if you order, I will ship it out. That's a guarantee because the post office is 15 minutes down the street. Um, usually, if you say live in the U.S., it's five to eight days on standard shipping. Um, anywhere else in the world, I'd say two weeks. In Canada, um, two weeks. <laughs> and exactly. yeah, it's like international prices and international shipping times. It's crazy. <laughs> Canada, it's crazy. Yeah. I can get a package to Arizona in like four days. Exactly. <laughs> That's because the America. It's because everyone in Canada lives 200 miles from the U.S. border, and once it gets to the USPS, it goes. And you guys are good at that, so we'll put that on the USPS being. Excellent, excellent delivery system. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the sourdough now. Um, I am a pancake fanatic. I love good pancakes. And my sisters got me um, addicted to the prepared pantry out of um, Idaho Falls, Idaho. And you can get like these wonderful mixes. I think they have like 50 different mixes. Well, this um, farmhouse on Boone had the sourdough recipe and these are the pancakes right here here's the pancake that we made this afternoon it's the chocolate chip pancake it's just, it's and good. they're like these are better than prepared pantry <laughs> <laughs> I've always had to make a mix or or because my pancakes from scratch were just kind of okay these are like 
chocolate chip cookies. This is a chocolate chip pancake. It's like a chocolate chip cookie. I did slightly modify her recipe and add a little more sugar and fewer eggs, but it's amazing. It doesn't taste like sourdough. It tastes like, do I do the taste test? Yeah, sure. I'll do another taste test. I haven't yeah. eaten these earlier, right? No, this is the first time I'm eating <laughs> This is the first time. Mm. They're like cookies. So we're prepping and avoiding the spicy noodle challenge, if you couldn't figure that out. <laughs> Dip it in the noodles. <laughs> Dip it in the noodles. But yeah, isn't that like a cookie? It's like That's a chocolate fantastic. chip cookie. It's so good. So check out the farmhouse on Boone if you've got too much sourdough starter. Um, I'll keep you updated on the English muffins. Um, and also put a link if I do that. So do you guys want to see the spicy noodle challenge? Because we're going to do it. Cornbread pancakes. Yeah, Ooh. I like cornbread pancakes. Yeah, yeah, cornbread pancakes are really good. I have a mix for those from Prepared Pantry. So if you have a really good recipe, Hannah, send it to me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> send it to me. Just put it in the description below and everybody can enjoy it. <laughs> okay, like so look up your recipe. Put it in, make a comment later and put it in there. Because you got to see the beginning with your, with your brother's um, spiel anyway, right? You're going to come back. <laughs> okay, you ready for the challenge? Wait. Okay, get your noodles. Is there any more questions? Are there any more, um, <laughs> more questions? Oh, she asked earlier, like, do, do you do all the art and photogra photography? Ah, yeah, that's a word. Photography for the tape art. There's um, the word. She did it right. So, um, depends. I really don't do a lot of this art. A lot of these um, artists already have all their... Um, you know, artwork and stuff prepared. Um, for these first three that I did, Let's show. Um, yeah, I guess we'll show the covers. Polygon Wanaland, Recessions, and Is This Temporary? Um, they had partial artwork, like they had a digital cover, but all the like J cards that I did for the inside of the tape, um, that was all me. I formatted it all and took a little bit of work. Yeah, That's what I enjoy. He's an artist too. Yeah. He gets it. He gets it. He gets it. It's from my mom. Yeah. It's from my mom. Even Check his out. dad. Even yeah. his dad is an artist. He's a graphic. There you go. Just. There we go. Those are coming tomorrow. Woohoo! So exciting. So exciting. All right. So. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Let's get down here so you can see the noodles and my big. That's not wet. That's dry. That's that's nice. <laughs> so we're cheating a little bit um it's cold yeah. <laughs> and i can um tolerate hot spicy things better when they're cold so i'm gonna hold up mine because if we go any further i'll cut him he's like six foot nine ten eleven twelve he's like seven feet tall so i'm i'm gonna die either way <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, some space okay so mine are cheesy ramen noodles and i have you put all that the hot spice on there right yes every bit of it yeah all the packets so i like this one because it's kind of like um macaroni and cheese but i have never had all the hot spice on it i always put just a tiny bit but this is the one i wanted to try full for spicy noodles so you ready i'm um, nope but let's do the Look same at the way. difference in these two <laughs> i might have to steal a vitamin Bright so orange. i'm not as Okay, you ready? Yeah. His are volcano noodles, and they're big, fat noodles, too. Bottoms up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's hot. Oh, this sucks. Oh, oh I hate hot. this. <laughs> it tastes so good, but it's burning all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets Do worse. You switch? Do you want to switch? Uh, sure, I'll take some of yours. Okay, he's gonna cool down a little bit. I'll try his. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse <laughs> over time. Are you getting into burning up? <laughs> okay, you ready? Yep. Mmm. Holy crap! Oh! This one's much better. <gasps> yo, yo! Volcano! <laughs> Sucks, doesn't it? It's so good though. It's oh. like. <sighs> oh, you're talking about. I kind of yeah, hate it. 
You don't like it? I can't touch my face. This. Okay, you can have the rest of this one. This is going to take me like four hours to finish it, but I probably will. I'll probably put a little more sugar on it. It's still... Okay, wait. I'll like do one flavor. more. You're going to do one more? I'll do one more bite. I love how big they are. Like, they're fat noodles. Oh, yeah. But it, like, soaks up all the spice, and I'm pretty much my... My my eyes are on fire. <laughs> Dairy neutralizes the heat. Okay, let me go get some of that yogurt I made. I made yogurt from positively probiotics. We'll get the skier yogurt. Or kefir. Kefir is even better. I made some really good kefir. I hate this. I <laughs> uh, gotta take this off. <laughs> Rebel Z tapes. You're getting hot? I'm getting, oh I'm getting hot. I'm too white for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning bright red. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, I made some kefir and vanilla. Do you want to try it? Yes, please. Anything. Okay. So it's kind of thick. It's... <laughs> so this is my homemade kefir. Milk kefir. Is that good? It was very good. It's gone in the mouth. It's really, really. Now a little troubleshooting with kefir. It's something I learned this week. If your kefir starts to get fizzy, and Positively Probiotics has shared that with me, then what it's developed is something called kefir flowers. And it also affects the texture. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's taking that tiny <laughs> it's sip. It's so hot. Don't go, but tiny sip. The kefir flowers make it fizzy and make it kind of chunky looking. So if you're having trouble with your kefir, the troubleshooting tip, rinse the kefir grains a few times and then let it ferment overnight, dump that or drink it and do it again. Keep it active. And then I actually increased a little bit of the fat content of the milk. So this is a creamy version of kefir. Isn't it nice yeah. and creamy? Yeah, it's not, it's really <laughs> I was going to make ice cream with it, but we ended up drinking it. <laughs> Might as well taste like that. Let me see your tongue. Uh, oh, it was. It was bright orange. Yeah. yeah. His lips, too. Oh, it makes it hotter when I do that. Mm. Keep it inside. Okay, I'm going to take another bite because I. These are actually sweet words. Those are cheesy. These ones are kind of cheesy. And these ones are spicy, spicy, spicy. But kind of sweet, right? So you, you want to take another bite of them. I understand why people can't get kind of. Hot though, I tried these once hot. I couldn't, not even a little bit. So that's why we cheated a little bit and made them cold. But they're still like, this is gonna burn all the way through my gut. I know it is. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be feeling mm -hmm. it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. when, excuse me. When I have a cold or something, spice is where it's at, where it's at, man. I have a lot of friends who done the spicy noodle challenge, so. That's why I did it. <laughs> I took up the challenge. I'll put the links to the people who did it below. But it was just super fun to watch them. Try it. <laughs> and there are so many noodles. Oh my gosh, I can't have any more of that. That's I'm done. Oh, I thought I could like later. Uh, he's right. It's too Sucks. hot for me. It's awful. <laughs> mm. It's like burning from the outside in. Like inside my mouth, you know, sometimes hots are in your nose, like wasabi or a Mexican spice can like burn further back or something can burn the front of your mouth. Well, this is burning all through my mouth. Yeah, and unless I take little sips, mm, it's too much. Volcanoes, no. I thought, I thought I had that one, but I don't think I had that one. <laughs> it's, I don't know that it's one. the worst kind of spice. <laughs> But it's kind of cool though. At the same time, it's oh, like yeah. it's like dragon fire. <sighs> Definitely know why it's called volcano. Where's the package? Go get one of the packages. Um, you can show them. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason I wanted to try the spicy noodle challenge is because we live in a city, we're in an island, and there are a lot of Asian brands out there, and things like places like Korea and Japan and um, other places in China have like a million different kinds of spicy noodles and so there's like probably 40 different brands of these in Vic in one in Vic Victoria grocery store and that's not even in 
Well, it's sort of an Asian fairways. It's kind of an Asian near the back of his neck. Yes. Look at his neck. Yes. <laughs> Is it on the back? Yeah, yeah, your neck and your ears are like <gasps> flushed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank well. you, Renee. And thank you for coming, guys. Thank you. <laughs> this was really, really fun. And we'll be talking more about probiotics. Um, milk kefir. Um, I've had my own milk kefir grains for the last... Well, 10 years and they've never grown very, very big at all. I have, I started with a teaspoon and now I have like a tablespoon. So I'm probably not the best resource on how to grow your own uh, milk kefir grains, but I do know how to cult cult culture it. Um, it's probably my method. Um, I am the only one who drinks it. And so I only make enough for me and I only drink about half a cup a day. So um, I tend to store it in the fridge until it's time to culture it. And then I put it on the countertop, wait for it to culture and then put new milk in. And that works for me. So, all right, bye Renee. Thank you for coming. Thank you for everyone who came. If you have any questions about activated, uh, no, not activated, apple cider vinegar toners. Oh, maybe that'll help. Ooh, that help. Mmm. <laughs> So oh know. my goodness, Blake, your like, nose is ready yeah, now. I'm, I'm there you dying. Go. I'm there so you glad go. the That's just water. good enough to see that. At least I hope not. So. <laughs> it's like his, his, eyes are, his eyes are going, his nose is going. Dad, that was quite the challenge, wasn't it? I, so check. I want to like do the thing where people finish the whole bowl, but I'm <laughs> you, not going to be can, able to do that. We can that. do it. We might be able to have another bite of this one. Yeah. They eat, do they eat the whole thing? Is that how the challenge works? Are we I, like total wusses? I think, wusses so. I think we're wusses. <laughs> well, let's try to finish at least this one bowl. Do you yeah, have your that, fork still? Uh, or is yeah. this your fork? No, this, I think this fork. is your fork. Yeah. Okay, we are going to finish this challenge we're, halfway. We're taking the wuss, the uh, wuss we, path. We're taking the, wuss, the less wuss path than we had originally decided. Mmm. Mmm. It's too much noodle. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like macro hot, 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 spicy macaroni and cheese. It's super spicy, but not, not unbearable. It's the good kind of spice. It's the good kind of spice. It's the same spice, but like a quarter of it. <laughs> also, side note, this expires on my birthday. I don't know <laughs> if that's a sign or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you tell me. <laughs> well, if you start with volcano, you can definitely do the chicken noodle, chicken cheese noodles. Have another bite, Blake. Uh, all right. <laughs> Save some more of this through the. Oh, I can eat. Good palm there. I yeah. like these noodles. Yeah, these are good. These are. I've never had them full strength, but they're really good this way. I was always afraid of the spice. I'll go get a package so you guys can see what they are. They're so good. You need spicy, but you're a little bit of a wuss like Lake and I. <laughs> now welcome back to Blake Eats Noodles for 50 <laughs> Here it is. Highly recommend it. Not really as spicy as... Uh, as the volcano noodles, but super, super tasty. That cheese, it's a little different. If you like macaroni and cheese, you will, and you like spicy stuff, you will totally love these noodles. They're super cheesy. And that cheese and that spice is really unique, I think. Um, the flavor combination is almost like eats, east meets west, I would say, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Because most Asian food doesn't have cheese in it. No. It's flavorful. I really mm. like it. It's like I'm eating ice cubes compared to the volcano. You stuff. want to finish it? Yes, please. Woohoo! Yeah, we did it. We did the challenge. <laughs> I think I'm going to go lay down forever. <laughs> and I should I try one more? I'm going to try one me. more. I'm, I'm going to try one more. I don't eat noodles very often, but these. Maybe it's just that one bite. Maybe because the first bite wasn't so bad. <laughs> I mean, you do you. I'm, I do. I'm... One more bite and then we'll cut out. Mm. 
you know what it is? If I ate it really fast, it would the 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 burn wouldn't catch up with me. So I think that I feel like I could take another bite. Oh. Yeah. That's fine. If I eat another one really, really quick, I'll be okay. No. No, I waited too long. <laughs> I waited too long and it settled into my skin and my tongue. Oops. So I want to say goodbye to everybody and thank you for coming. Um, this was super, super fun. Check out earlier in the feed if you want to learn how to make this um, apple cider vinegar toner, which is awesome. And it's made with hydrosol. <clears throat> and check out Blake's new business opportunity. All of these cassettes. All, All of these cassettes. this one? Did you make that oh, one? Oh, no, I didn't make that one. Oh, okay. That's a cool one. That's a cool one. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. See ya. Thumbs up. Click like and subscribe and join us next live or next upload. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. See ya. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. <sighs>